So today was a very bad day at work. Obviously, if you work in any type of customer service, you're going to come across people that just don't want to accept the information you're giving them. I'm not going to ever tell you particulars about my job, where I'm located, names, none of that. I just, full disclosure, I will never give out personal information. I will never, I won't even tell you like anything about my company, just that I work in the call center for, you know, Medicaid appeals. That's, that's it. That's, that's, that's like, I'm part of that. That's my title, but I'll never give, never give out like personal information, but it's just today was rough. Like, honestly, there are only two reasons why I'm still at this job. Two. One, it's a decent paying job. Like I've actually gotten some, some pay raises, which has helped with me being a single mom and struggling with debt because of things like being a homeowner and water heater and HVAC, which are so ridiculously expensive and just upkeep of the house and car problems and just that kind of stuff, paying off a car. I've got all that kind of debt, no credit card, no student loans, nothing like that, but it's still, it's a struggle. And I mean, I do have people that help me sometimes and I'm very grateful for that, but overall I'm doing everything on my own. So being paid well enough to survive because I still, I still get very low. Um, especially the first of the month when I have to pay the mortgage and car and storage and a whole bunch of stuff. It's, it's a nightmare. Um, so pay is decent. It's a job that I've been at for four years now. So I have, you know, a good standing in my position. I mean, like my rating is literally like they have to nitpick to not give me that 0.1%, but I'm like 99.9% like accuracy across the board. Like I have an established, you know, good standing. So I, I've been established at this job and I do my job pretty well. And I have, you know, gone raises because, you know, thanks to that performance, um, it's, it's a solid, stable job. Secondly, the only reason I even want to log into my computer is the team I work with because I don't think I could handle it if it was a hostile work environment, but I have a very amazing team. Like I'm about to cry because like, like I actually have a couple workplace besties that I talk to all the time that I really love to death. They are amazing ladies. And then I have like other people that I really enjoy talking to and enjoy hanging out when we do like, like if you've ever been in the military, you understand Mando fun day is not really that fun <laughs> because you're being told that you have to go because we're going to have fun. We're going to, you know, work together to, to, you know, be a team and we're going to really, you know, be cool with each other outside of work. And you're just like, I'm being forced to be here. I don't want to do this. <laughs> like it's not actually that fun. So if you understand Mando fun day, you understand what I'm talking about that, that those kind of things I absolutely hate, but I actually enjoy going to outings with my work team. I wouldn't like, I know that people say like, if, if a team says they're like family, that means they really aren't and they're ridiculous. And, but there's no backstabbing on my team. Like it's, I've been here for four years. Like, yes, I have looked kind of outside, like, you know, okay, because I don't like working at call center. I don't like talking to people on the phone, but this team is really supportive and they have my back and I have their back and we are always there with, you know, if there's a question in the chat that we try to answer each other, especially if there's new hires or like, oh, let me help you or, hey, give me a call and I can help you with this. Like there's no frustration with each other. There's no like, oh, why did this person do that? No, like we are actually pretty supportive of each other and they don't force us to go out on like outings for our team, but we coordinate with each other so that we can all try to be there. So we've actually gone out on like picnics and farmer's markets and like, and events, like we've actually done that stuff together as a team 
where we get dressed up, where we bring our kids, where we just enjoy ourselves. Like we actually do that. So for the pay and the stability of the job and because my team, that's the only reason I am still here because it becomes very anxious and stressful. I already have social anxiety. So talking to people on the phone is terrifying for me every single time. I have to take a breath after every call because I get nervous and upset. I especially have panic attacks where it's hard to breathe and I feel like I feel like everything's spinning and I start to hyperventilate sometimes when people start yelling at me and unfortunately that happens quite often. I completely understand that People are upset and scared when it comes to medical because if you live in America, you understand what I'm talking about. You know that getting a bill <laughs> is terrifying. Getting told that you don't qualify because X, Y, Z. It's upsetting. People who are hurting, who have disabilities, who are trying the best they can, but corporate America... We don't have free health care across the board here. So many people go without care because they can't afford even the co-pays. They can't afford the mess and that's hundreds of dollars. That with insurance might be like $5, but hundreds of dollars on your own. And it's something that you need to survive. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's terrifying. I understand. Just being in a call center, though, we're the messengers, we're the front of house, so we're the people that they speak to. We don't actually do anything behind the scenes. We don't actually push buttons for anything to do with the policy or with the actual coverage. And in the appeals department, we don't handle eligibility. We don't handle you actually being determined for coverage. We're just the audit team. We're just the research team. We're just the review team. Like as a whole, not us, like not me working the call center, but like just as a whole appeals is just like, okay, you said something's wrong and that should be corrected. Okay. We'll look into that for you and make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. But of course, sometimes we're going to have answers that people don't like so they can get upset. Today though, I was shaking in anger because I was being verbally abused and mistreated by someone. And I wasn't telling them anything bad. I was literally telling them, hey, this is our process. This is what's going on. And they got super upset with me because I wouldn't tell them, I guarantee you. And if you have ever worked with legal or the court system, you understand that even if you have nothing to do with something going wrong in the future or even if through a different department, if you guarantee something and it's recorded, you could be liable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't legally guarantee anything. That's really bad. <laughs> like we've been advised by our actual legal teams in our department to never guarantee anything. That's part of our training in the call center because our calls are recorded. So people think like <laughs> that you can be like nasty or mean to us. You think that, you know, people aren't going to know people review our calls for training. So if you're, if you're being very cruel or hurtful to people on the phone, just know it's probably being recorded and I am not going to guarantee anything ever. <laughs> I'm never going to guarantee anything because that's, that's wrong. Like I, as I said, I could be liable for that in the future, but because I wouldn't say those words, this person would not accept anything that I was, anything else I was saying. They were saying that I was hesitating. I was, I wasn't hesitating. I was trying very hard to stay calm and professional because they just would not accept any of the information I was giving them. It wasn't even bad news. It wasn't even like, oh, I'm sorry. You don't qualify. No. I won't tell you what it was because I won't tell you specifics about this, but it's like, it wasn't the, the whole, like, sorry, you've been denied and sorry, we can't help you type of thing. It was literally, Hey, 
we fixed this issue. We went through the process. We fixed what needed to be fixed. This is where you're at. But because I would not say the words I guarantee, they thought it was okay to be even more aggressive and verbally abusive towards me. And it, that does something to a person, especially if you have complex PTSD, if you have anxiety, if you have depression, I was shaking anger. And then as I was typing up my notes and email for review, I was crying. I was just, I was just crying so much. Like, I know that some people think that call center means the person you're talking to is the one who handles everything. And that's not always true. And then people might demand like, okay, then let me speak to that person. No, because they're just trying to do their job and we don't want you to hurt them either. Like people seem to have this native view of call center or thinking that because things don't happen to be going your way, that it's okay to go off on someone. And I've been there. I've been there experiencing starvation. I've been there facing homelessness. I've been there facing real issues throughout my life and just needing help and not getting help and really being upset. I've had medical emergencies. I've, I've had bills that I couldn't pay. Like I have been there. I think that's the thing that people forget is that when you talk to someone on the phone, they're human too. I can't tell you how many times people who've been going through, I understand something horrible. Be like, you don't understand what I'm going through and it's like cancer and it's like, I've lost people I love to cancer. Okay. I understand. <laughs> I'm also a veteran. I've had some very, very mean, um, men on the phone who were trying to use their service as an excuse to act the way that they were. And that's not okay. And if I mentioned I was a veteran, I've been told that there's no way you're a veteran. <laughs> like, yeah, I did my time. I even re-enlisted. Like, I was injured and pushed so hard to get the surgery to be corrected so that I could be fit for full duty. And I even re-enlisted to make sure that could happen. I did everything in my power to make sure that I could continue to serve my country. So... <laughs> may not have been as long as some people, but I did eight years. So that's still, that's still quite a bit. I mean, in America, it's a volunteer service. So I did eight years voluntarily. Yeah. Even if I did two years or four years, I'm still a veteran. But people either forget or they don't want to acknowledge that there's a whole person behind the phone. There's a whole person. And what you say affects us. And I was just so, so upset. So when I went to pick up the boys, I said, you know what? I was going to save up some money for something later. Not, not like serious, like bills or anything, but I was going to save up some money for something later. But I was like, you know what? No, I, I need a pick me up. So I told the boys we're going to Walmart because I have to get a couple other things there. But while we're there, let's get something like some chocolate or something. Let's get, let's just spoil ourselves. So we got a few things that we enjoy comfort foods and, Alan has like a fuzzy socks day coming up for school. So we got him some new fuzzy socks because he doesn't wear them very often. I do, but of course he doesn't want to wear mine. <laughs> he wants to wear his own. Um, I got some more kimchi because I finally found a product that I really like. Um, the other, the other brands I've tried recently, just so I know the other brands I've tried recently, 
I understand fermentation, but the other brands that I tried really were very overpowering and strong. Like I couldn't even taste like the actual kimchi. Like it's just, it was just too much. This though, this though, actually like, so just so you know, um, this was like <laughs> half full earlier, but, um, it's just been, it's been coffee and kimchi. That's become one of my comfort foods. So I got like two more of those from Walmart. <laughs> In case you're wondering if you want to get this at Walmart, um, it's near the Lunchables where the Lunchables are located. It's like right next to it. I think they also have like tofu and some other stuff in there. But anyway, if you don't like spice, not for you. Um, cause there's some spice involved. Don't worry. I'm not going to eat for the rest of the video. I'll, I'll finish this video and then I'll go eat. But, um, I'll eat kimchi by itself or I'll eat it as, as a side or topping on like rice and some sort of meat or something. Or with rice and veggies, I'll like put it on top or to the side. Or today, because I'm a weirdo, I did like a sourdough toasted, like a toasted sourdough bread sandwich with some thinly sliced uh, beef that I cooked earlier. Well, not today, but two days ago. Um, that I've been adding to a lot of like rice dishes lately. And... I got some bacon with the boys because the boys love bacon. So that's one of their comfort foods. So thick sliced bacon. And then I put like kimchi in the middle of the sandwich because I like, if it wasn't going to be kimchi, it was going to be like some sort of spicy mayo or something because I do like to have some spice in a kick, but I will add kimchi to a lot of stuff, but it's, um, I finally found the brand that I like because I can actually taste the, the flavor and the spice without the overwhelming power, like power of like the fermentation that that's similar to alcohol. Like if it's too overpowering that I'm not getting the rest of the, kim like I enjoy kimchi for the, for the, what it is, not just the, yeah. I don't know how to explain myself, but that was my, that was my way of comforting myself is getting two more of those so that I can finish this off. <laughs> Along with coffee, because I I brewed I brewed Death Wishes espresso, so I had an entire pot of espresso. So that is my third cup in the last couple hours. I'm starting to actually feel a little tired now, so that's good. But earlier today, I was like I was so jittery and upset after that that last call, the last call of the day, no less. So I got off late from work. And I was worried about picking up my kids because it was like, again, this person just did not want to accept whatever I was telling them. But I just, I had to sit there for a moment and take a few breaths. But after a while, that didn't even help. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have to finish this out. And then I was just crying. I was just crying. And it's, it sucks. Some days it sucks. Like there are days when I'll just, be doing my job and you know there are people who will call us and say thank you so much for giving me information I really do think that my department actually knows more about policy and guidelines than a lot of other departments because even if we don't handle that even if we don't handle eligibility we know where to go to find the policy that explains it and coverage and so we are directing people to that and we are reading it off to them and we're like, oh, because this is what we see all the time, because we are used to seeing this kind of determination on something like a notice or whatever, like we are knowledgeable, even if we are not the ones that handle that, we are knowledgeable of it. And so if someone has a question about coverage, they'll be like, ah, I can tell you where to find information about that. So there are people who will call us and ask for, you know, information because they're like, I don't understand this process and we'll explain the process to them. And then we will direct them to the policy because they said, like, I don't understand this policy or I don't understand this question about this type of coverage. Like, ah, I can tell you that actually here, just a moment, and I'll tell them. And so we have been thanked profusely by some people 
for giving them answers when they feel like they could get answers elsewhere. So, I mean, like, my department really, we don't, we're not required to do that. I am not required to talk about that stuff. And we do try to keep it short because, again, we're, we are not in charge of policy. But at the very least, I can give you the website, you know? So, like, I will give you the website. I will, I will tell you what it says right here, this little line. And a lot of times that's all people want is an answer. All, that's all they want is the next step. They, they just want to understand the process. So my team goes above and beyond all the time. We're not required to do that. But we do it because we actually want to help people. The problem is, is that there are days like today where, as I said, some people just don't want to accept whatever we're telling them. Even if it's not bad or anything, like just that this is what it is. But because it's not what they want specifically, they're still going to fight us on it. And at the end of that call, I felt like garbage. I felt like shit. I was so depressed and so upset. I was looking down on myself. I was angry for being treated like that. I was just... It reminded me of all the bad things that my mom told me every single day of my life growing up. All the verbal abuse. It reminded me of all the bullies I'd ever faced in my life. It reminded me of all the men who had demeaned me and tried to belittle me. It reminded me of not being believed whenever I tried to tell the truth about something, whenever I was the victim of something and people just brushed me aside. When people go off on me verbally like that, it reminds me of all those instances in my life and makes me feel horrible. So comfort food and drink helped a little to calm me down. But at the end of it, I still feel like garbage. And I'm probably going to feel like this for at least another couple days. So the entire weekend, I'm probably going to feel like this. I will still get things done because they need to get done. Because I'm the type of person where I will be terrified of something, but I'll do it anyway. Such as working in a call center when I have social anxiety. Like being a briefer for like COs and XOs for the triad and a command for Intel. Briefing people, even though I hate public speaking because I'm terrified. It doesn't matter if you're a family or friend. Like if I'm standing on a podium or like at a podium, or if I'm standing on a stage or something, I feel like I, I can't breathe. And it may seem inconsequential. It may seem simplistic or, you know, just not that big a deal to a lot of people, but it's a big deal to me. So I have to talk to people on the phone for my job. I am terrified of doing that, but I do it anyway. It is my job and I am good at it. Even when people can seem unreasonable on the phone or they just don't want to accept what's going on. Even when people are screaming and cursing at me, I will do my job to the very best of my ability. Even if I don't feel like it, even if my executive dysfunction is working in overdrive and I really just am stressing about getting something done, I will push myself even if I feel completely wrung out afterwards and sometimes I'll break down crying because it's like, I really did not want to do this. I'm very anxious. I forced myself to do it and I'm upset now because of it, but it needs to get done. But afterwards, I know I'm going to suffer for it. And all of this because someone decided to speak to me in a very horrible way. Because they didn't see me as human. They didn't see me as a person. They just saw someone that they can scream and yell at and say awful things to and be demanding towards because they weren't getting their way. 
and I literally wasn't doing anything or saying anything wrong. I was literally telling them what the process was and what this next step is and that the, nothing was wrong. But because I wouldn't say the words, I guarantee they had to really go off on me. But again, they didn't see me as a person. They didn't, they didn't think of me as someone with thoughts and feelings. They just thought call center and you're not telling me what I want you to tell me. So I'll go off on you. So at the end of all this, this is a reminder that there are people who you may talk to on the phone. There are service people who are in customer service. They are human. They are people. You have no idea what they are going through sometimes. As I said, some people have gone off of me, said, you probably don't even know what cancer is. You probably don't understand. Like, someone even told me that there's no way I would know what Alzheimer's was. And I was like, I've lost someone I love very much to that. I have lost people I love to cancer. I've lost people I love to car accidents, to drunk drivers, to... I know what loss is. I've lost people I care about to health issues, to suicide. I know that there are people who are in pain. Sometimes they'll say things when they're upset and in pain. But I'm asking people in this world to take a pause because we're human too. We have lost, we have grieved, we are struggling just as much. There are a lot of my coworkers who have kids too, young kids just like I do. They're going through a lot and I've talked to people who I've talked to people who have been upset because of something that happened to them and then they take out all their frustration and rage on the person they're talking to. I'm asking please for people to take a moment that even if you're in pain, I don't think it's okay to unload on the people that are in customer service that are trying to help you or trying to give you information. I know I understand it may not be the answer you're looking for sometimes, but that doesn't give you the right to say some of those things, to scream. And I have done that and I have felt guilty afterwards ever since that time years ago when it happened, when I did that to a person over the phone and I apologize right after and I have never done that since. Like I think like this was years ago. This is after my car accident years ago. And my previous insurance company screwed me over so much. They didn't help me at all. They didn't send things that they were supposed to. They didn't defend me whatsoever. They, they blamed me. They, they went off on me and I screamed and I cursed and I was so upset. And yeah, I definitely... We'll scream and curse about stuff, but even still, I felt guilty after that one time that I did it. And I apologized and I, I said, I was so sorry. I'm just so scared and upset because this situation means that I have to pay thousands of dollars when I wasn't at fault, but you didn't help me. So now you're saying that I did, it was just, it was a mess. And I was scared and hurt. And I had a concussion afterwards too. So that didn't help either. I felt guilty though. And I did apologize. And I have never done that on the phone with anyone ever. No matter how mad. No matter how many times that I almost lost the home. Because someone did not process the information I sent them for the loan service. I did not yell and I did not scream and I did not curse them because I know how that feels. 
So I'm asking people to consider that. That how would you feel if people did that to you randomly on the street, just start cursing and screaming at you because they didn't like the way something happened or or the way you looked at them or like it's I know it seems ridiculous, but it's true. Like we're human, we're people. We go through things too, just like you. As I said, this is going to upset me the whole weekend. Maybe even longer. Because when I get depressed, I get depressed. I will still push through and get things done and go through the motions, but I'm not going to be happy. I'm going to be upset and I'm probably going to go through an entire another thing of kimchi by, by tomorrow, I swear. It really is really good. I'm not going to lie. I, I know I said that I wasn't going to eat, like, until after the video, but I just got done crying a bit, so. I will say, though, this kimchi is more chopped up. I do prefer, like, bigger slices or thicker chunks, but, uh, at least I like the taste of this, so. Sorry, I just, I need people to know that it's not okay to demean others, to scream and curse and it's not okay. We're human too. On the other end of that call, we're human too. And I'm, I'm hoping that next week will be better. I am hoping. I've also been struggling lately with my kids' school with trying to get Alan's IEP, a new IEP in place for, for more help that he could need. Alan has been depressed and had ideation recently. So it's like, I have all these struggles going on. Like I am worried about my almost 10 year old because he has freaking ideation. Like It's bad enough that I have dealt with that stuff as a child, but my, my son is dealing with it. So you never know what people are going through, what they're struggling with. You never know. I get that there are people in pain, but I don't think that's good enough or justified as an excuse to pile on another person to to take out all your pain and anger on someone else especially a stranger but I mean just it's always hard when people go off and then they say like you wouldn't understand how would you know I just gave you a list of things that I understand how I've lost people. I mean, there are so many things that I've gone through. There's so many things that I live in fear of. There's so many things that I am still struggling with day to day. How do you know that I wouldn't understand? I don't think being in pain means it's okay to invite pain upon others, to give pain to others. I don't, that's not okay. But I think a lot of people who work in call centers would commensurate at least that, yeah, we deal with that constantly, but we're human too. So if you have never worked in a call center or in customer service in general, where you have to face people constantly, I, I invite you to at least pause and think for a moment because we are people, we have struggles, we have lost, we grieve. There are people that I know who lost people to COVID. There are people I know who have had COVID more than once and we were afraid of losing them. Like, the struggles are real. We understand it. 
just, I hope, I hope that others can see this and think it's okay to try to give a little bit more kindness or to at least pause and take a breath. Like, we understand your frustration. We totally understand. Honestly, if I could have my way, just me personally, if I could have my way, I would have free health care for everyone in America. Like, there would be so many benefits included. People wouldn't have to wait years sometimes to get coverage. People could just qualify and not have to be denied constantly for certain things that's beyond their control. Like, I personally would love to have healthcare across America. I would. But I'm not in charge of that. I can't do that alone as one person. So the next time that you're on a call, and you're trying to get something fixed, or you're trying to, trying to understand what the process is, or feel like you're not getting any answers... I feel like there's something in my hair. Sorry. <laughs> Just before you start yelling and screaming or cursing, maybe take a moment, maybe, maybe take a breath to to just maybe just take a breath because there was a person on the other end of that call and I'm not saying that all people in call centers are, you know, considered or professional. I'm sure there are people who lose their tempers too. I know that I have a, a couple times and I'm not proud of that. I've been very frustrated myself when it's like, dude, I've told you everything. Like, <laughs> or this is what it is. I can't, <laughs> I do not have that magic button that makes everything go the way you want it to. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like, I know that not every person who works in call centers is, is going to be like that. Um, and each call center for each department within each business organization is going to be different. They're going to have different policies, different guidelines. They're going to have different ways of doing things. They're going to have different scripts that they go by if they have scripts that they go by. So this isn't across the board, but I still want people to think before you start going off, take a moment, take a breath, and please try to see us as human. Just please. <laughs> all right, I am, I am done unloading on all this. I'm probably still going to be crying a little bit, but I have kimchi and coffee, so <laughs> I have to finish at least the, the third cup of coffee. I probably should drink some more water. I haven't really drunk that much water today, which is bad. <laughs> um, I'm normally pretty good about it now. But just today. Just today. Today has been bad. I guess oh, ending on a good note, I did weigh myself today. I don't normally weigh myself, but I collectively lost six pounds over the last three months. So, yay. <laughs> that's, that's good. I've been, I've been building muscle to, you know, burn away that fat. So all that little bit of pudge that's left over, um, you know, from having kids and being injured and all that. But yeah, so my work has been paying off. So I should, I should drink more water. Uh, cause that's, that's healthy. That's good. Um, I hope that I have better days ahead. I hope that I can do more videos. I did plan on doing some videos to go over K-dramas, but <sighs> things have been happening lately. So, and the K-dramas that I last said that I was going to go over, uh, <laughs> I finished at least three since three, four. I have to look at my notes. I at least three, but possibly four. I've finished that many in the last month. So I, 
<laughs> so I'm going to have to reevaluate. I'm just going to have to pick and choose which K-drama to go over and then go from there. So from the last video that I said I'd go over K-dramas, I have finished at least three, possibly four. And I'm still waiting for the next episode of Castaway Diva. Oh, but today's Friday, so I should get on with my demon because that new episode dropped. So, yay. I'm currently catching up with her private life. But anyway, anyway, so if it's not four, then it will be four. And if it is four, then it will soon be five that I've finished before I do the next video. But okay, I'm all over the place, which means that I should probably get off and finish my kimchi. Okay. Bye.